Hello everyone. <laughs> so here we are again at the garden and uh, we're going to plant our banana tree. Okay, because it's raining this week, so it's a good week to do plantation of trees. Uh, and it's not cold, as you see I'm with a t-shirt. So I'm going to make a hole right here. Here, we've been testing the wind, it's not too windy over here. It's got a wall on one side, it's got trees on the other side. So it's protecting from the wind. It says here it needs a lot of sun. So um, this place right here uh, gets sun from east to west and uh, in a straight line early in the morning it gets sun and in the late afternoon as well. So we're going to try it out here and see how it goes and maybe get another one you know. <laughs> Although it's full of babies but if it goes if we see it grabs well onto the ground then we'll just get another one so. I'm going to start, uh, you want to hold here, just hold like that. This ground already has a lot of fertilizer because we used to have a lot of chickens going on here, a lot of cages. So that's why the ground is dark and I know it's good. So I'm not going to use any fertilizer. I'm just going to use the whatever comes with the plants and uh, add some of this one. Okay. Put some rocks over here. So that it can let the excess of water get out. Just a few, you know. A few stones. I always do this. Because it's a rainy week, I don't want it to get too flooded, you know. And see if it comes out. Okay, there you go. Yeah, it was wet, that's why. So... There you go, all the roots, they're ready to spread, can you see that? Mm -hmm. See, because it's drained, that's why it's always good, I like planting the trees when it's not too much rain, but it's like a rainy day, in the morning, half day rain, half day sun, I mm -hmm. think that's the ideal time, so, now let's see here, okay, so it just needs...
pets. Just like I do with the vegetables and everything, I'm going to let the roots just spread to where they want to and leave it in God's hands. And that's it. And we'll leave the little card here, okay, so that whoever comes does not destroy the banana tree. <laughs> so, going to take the Sasha, the dog, to the vet, see if we can finally get the funnel off of her. Uh, take her on the saxo. Sasha is at the vet. And uh, let's see if we can get this funnel out today. She seems much better. So we're just going to wait to see what the, the vet says. Mm -hmm. We're optimistic. Hey, Sasha. You're optimistic, Sasha? Yes, you are. She doesn't like the vet, but... <laughs> She has to go. <laughs> Don't worry, it's quick session. So today we have here a recipe that we're doing. This is for a stew, and uh, we're also going to make um, beef jerky. Okay, got our steaks here. I just have to put the vinegar and seasoning. I'll show you just now. So here we got tomato. Fresh tomatoes. We have uh, onion. Okay, just cut the onion in tiny pieces. And um, we have um, a bay leaf. One bay leaf. Where's the bay leaf? Where's the bay leaf? Where? I can't find the bay leaf. Oh, there it is. It's just stuck there. Okay. Oh, there you and go. now we're gonna put a bit yeah. of tomato sauce. And bay leaf. Now we put a um, normal tomato paste that you okay. buy um, in the shops. And here we have the meats, veal meats, uh, just with water and salt. We use these um, electronic pressure cookers, which are much better than the conventional ones, just yeah. easier to use at home. So we just have the, even the menu for stew right here, so it's quite practical and easy. Just put the lid on, and that's it, with the safety valve, the correct position. Just press stew. Stew, and with the time. Okay. Minus four. three. That's the program 25 and it's cooked and then you guys start. And yeah, uh, gonna put a bit of red wine, always good wine on your food, never cheap wine, remember that. What you drink is what you eat as well, okay? <laughs> In this case. <laughs> and here yeah, for the beef jerky, what we're gonna do is the South African way, it's called Bolton. It's beef jerky anyways. And um, it's just a recipe is different because the seasoning is different and we use um, I like using this vinegar that I get which is this vinegar malt vinegar okay it's actually from Heinz um, it gives a very nice taste to the meats okay it's not like that acidic taste I don't like using the um, wine vinegar or cider vinegar this one's much more pleasing it has much more taste that's why it's malt vinegar so that's what I go for and it's worth it. It's a big difference, big difference. So we just sprinkle with vinegar. Okay, I'm just gonna always wash your hands very well. A lot of hygiene infect the bowl, you know, because you don't want nothing contaminating the meat. Okay, on this side again we have now two potatoes and our beans, okay? Our green beans, okay. Um, this is what we're going to need next to put in our stew. I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so we have um, now also carrots. We just like making it more complete. Carrots and a gourget. Hey, Ma. Gourget. And a gourget. Okay. And now also some Portuguese sausage. Okay. Called chorizo. And this is going to give a lot of taste to the stew. So now next step, just cut it all up. We won't use the whole thing of yeah. the, the sausage. But uh, we're just going to cut the whole thing, put it in a plate, show you guys. And then uh, 
toss it all there. I'm gonna got my hands washed, all washed, all disinfected. I use the normal alcohol. Use the oh normal alcohol, no 90 degrees alcohol to disinfect the balls and everything. And uh, now we just sprinkle all the vinegar. These bottles are cool because they come with a little hole. So it just makes it easier, you know, to just sprinkle it. It's like uh, just watering the steaks. <laughs> okay, so now just make sure there's... Don't be afraid of using vinegar, okay. Then it all has to do with the timing you leave it marinating and the time you leave it to dry, you know. So, vinegar is not expensive anyways. I don't mind using. That's what's going to make keep the meats clean, you know. Um, help to maintain it in a hygienic form, for, so that it can dry properly, you know, and safe. So yeah, never be afraid of using vinegar. So I sprinkle on the steak in the bowl. Because the bowl also has like a little curve, so like that we make sure that there's enough vinegar, okay. So that's good, now we go for the spices. So here I'm using the Safari Built on Seasoning. Um, it's my favorite one, okay. Uh, so this also comes from South Africa. This one here, see Cape Town, right there. So this is what they use in South Africa for the built on. Now put this in a bowl so that then you can just sprinkle it all around. So here we go, as you can see, it's got a lot of color to it. Let's see if I can zoom this in better. As you can see, it's really got salt and all different type of spices. See, looks like just a full mixture of spices and that. It has a very nice color and a very, very good taste to it. Okay, so it's attached very well to the meats as well see it's got everything it needs so what we do now is we just take with the hand okay always infect well your hands and uh, just sprinkle it all around so we just just make sure that we cover the whole area see So what I do, um, so that, like if I turn the steak right now, most of the spice will fall off and it won't give coloring to the meat. So I like to sprinkle on one side, I put it in the fridge, and then in two hours time, I turn it around and sprinkle the other side, you see. Like that is really ensure that it's marinated and the flavor and everything passed through, you know. It just got stuck onto the side of the meat. The vinegar is just going to wash it away, and uh, you're going to have to keep on adding, you know, and it's just not going to get that rich flavor that I like. That salty, spicy flavor that is the bolt on. Beef jerky, I know, has different type of um, spices, but the, um, the method is more or less the same. Just different tastes, different spices. Even in South Africa, they have a lot of different spices and everything. So, there you go. Okay, now, some of this will fall off when we turn it around. And that's why I like to keep it for two hours. Okay, put it in the fridge, and that's it. So, I always use a cover on top. And uh, like that, I can use the cover just to cover it up. Okay, there you go. So it doesn't get the cold, you know right on top of the meat so as it dries quicker and just loses the flavor you know so just keep it closed up it's better don't do this with the Tupperware or the bowl open okay always covered up and there you go in the fridge you go I, I keep it on five degrees that's sufficient okay so we got also mushrooms in here uh, so we got all our vegetables that we showed you earlier on and mushrooms, okay? So now we just 
put it all in. And there you go. Just want to scrape that off. The rest of the mushrooms all goes inside. And there you go, see? It's a much better colour and it's going to give so much more taste to the stew. You can add so many things into this, just use your imagination. And here we're just waiting. These tend to last a long time, these electric pressure cookers. There's a lot of makes now, you know, different makes. I don't even know this one. But uh, there's Ninja, there's so many. So just go on the internet, on Amazon, you can search it out. It's in Pro. So the other pressure cooker also that I also tried already is Instant Pro. This was also a very good one. Ninja and Instant Pro, those two makes all good. We have the um, air fryer Ninja, it's also very good. It's just, um, we stopped using fried and we stopped using oil. We don't fry anything anymore. We stopped using oil for a long time already. Um, you can just do everything in this. It does, it's like a mini oven and does all type of air frying and very good quality. At least with this one I've had very good feedback. We also put some um, noodles. Just toss them right in now. Um, we don't film the noodles for the inside. <laughs> Neither the two hands. So, um, put some noodles as well. There's all type of shapes and colors. And just uh, use imagination. Put some more wine. This is the wine that we drink at meal. Okay. And uh, now just gonna also put some garlic. Okay. Just squish the garlic right into it. There you go. Okay. We'll add another what? Another two. Okay, just fill that up. Mix it up. Spread all the flavor inside. A bit more garlic. Another two. Then we put. Uh, you put both of them in there, really. Uh, that's why it's hard to take out. There you go. Okay, just mix it up a bit. Okay, put more garlic. Garlic is very healthy, so it gives a lot of taste to the food. Okay, so there you go. Easy stew. Now we just let it do its own thing. <laughs> just now, it will be ready to join the whole lot. So, this was on safety, no pressure. Once it's done, went to zero. Just open manually the air valve, little by little. You start here and then you just keep on pushing time by time until it starts releasing pressure released a lot before now it's getting lower the pressure so just now it'll be good to open up the lid and that's it my right arm because so, uh, I was going the wrong way sorry <laughs> and just uh, turn the lid the opposite side don't put your hand on top of the vapor that's coming out because it will always burn just drop all that water there it always drips water the lids it's normal but it's hot so you gotta be careful and there you go meat is cooked tenderized best way to tender the meat is through a pressure cooker okay so now it's time for the meat all cut up and there you go mix it a bit all together let it do its thing just soak it up in there without squishing the potatoes and vegetables and that was we like to eat it's whole you know and this nice. is another Italian spice with a more mixture homemade so that is all good <laughs> so just put this? some Italian 
big spices inside because I think the roast tastes nice with the stew. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that's Let me it. see if it's sticky. So just mix it all together. Make sure it won't stick on the bottom. Okay. On the, on the, on the pan. And this is the water that we made from the meats, so it's got a lot of flavor. Okay, it's like stock almost. And we put two spoons of that inside the stew. And now we just let it rest a bit. Let it all do its own thing. And um, have a time. I'll taste the sauce now. Rest it for five minutes. See if it needs more salt. Need more salt. Okay, it needs more salt. Okay. Salt, but you always have to try to see if it needs a bit more. Okay, so we took it out the pan. This is how it looks, very nice indeed. Okay, so you can also put like a pastry on top if you want, uh, put it in the oven. Okay, um, and that's also look nice. You can also put cheese on top, which has a little bit there that fell by mistake. <laughs> You can spread cheese on top, mozzarella, or just any other cheese you want. If you put a thin pastry sheet on top, it's also nice because it just breaks in, you know, and becomes a surprise. But uh, we're just going for this today. It looks very nice. See all the colors and the flavors are also very good. So we're just going to add mozzarella cheese, which we like. This one has like two different type of cheese. So we actually put more, it's just for the video now. <laughs> and uh, yes, that's how you do a little stew, see? Very nice, very nice indeed. And now this goes to the table, which is quite hot. I cannot pick up with my hands. You can also put some olives, as you can see here. You see? And that's just so nice. I will in fact try one, see how it is. Yes, yeah, very good. And there you go. Okay, so the bolt on. See, it has already been seasoning on one side. So now you can see that it's really gotten into the mix. See? So that's looking good. And now it's time to flip it over and season on the other side. Okay, so now just go and turn it. And you'll see the difference, see? So it's already became a bit darker, but you see, if I turned it right over at the time, um, it never goes into it like just waiting for two hours or three, you know? So it has vinegar, it has everything, see? Now we're going to turn this one as well. Just wet it in the vinegar like that. So now when I turn this, you see, part of it will always fall, see? But if I hadn't waited that, um, that time, um, most of it just would have fallen by just turning it, you see? That's why I like to make sure it soaks in before I turn it on the other side. Okay, so now we're just going to take more seasoning and spread it on this side. So this seasoning also has um, um, everything it needs to preserve the meats, okay, and everything. So this is safe to do under the right conditions and using the right hygiene methods. Timing is uh, also very important and the right seasoning of course. So this is the sea we already buy the seasoning already made and therefore it's already um, Let's say it's already bolt To dry the meats, okay in a safe way and a way that it will always be successful And give good results Okay, almost there just make sure it 
cover every spot it's important Let's make sure we cover every spot like that we know that all the meat was seasoned right okay and there you go so that part is all seasoned up okay this side and then um, what I also do is not the part that has like fats it's not needed because that's already protects the meat the fats but um, on the side I'll take with a fork you know and I will just um, like turn it like that and just sprinkle it over you know uh, I can't really show you but I'll show you the results okay so let me show you guys what I was talking about you see so on the side I also put the seasoning on the side so I make sure everything gets well covered okay um, and like that I know that I'll have success with my biltong or beef jerky <laughs> okay so now it goes back into the fridge and we turn it okay every two hours and once um, I think it's ready to go into the dryer then I just put it into the dryer it's a specific dryer just for this type of meat treatment and I'll show you guys then the, the final results okay and cut open the meat so that you guys can see it's dry inside outside and it tastes just beautiful oh and Sasha also an update she's doing very good okay so she doesn't have a funnel anymore and um, the vet said that she's looking good everything was a success everything went well thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ and um, she's good to go <laughs> and have a normal life so the bolt on now is back into the fridge and now two and two hours just turn it over um, I'm also going to show you guys another thing I'm preparing for next video sorry for the um, flip over of the camera guys just bear with me because I forgot I was uh, videoing sideways and that I should have been videoing upwards you know uh, so apology for that guys because I'm new on this editing stuff so um, I still have to see how I'm gonna edit these these patches of videos all together <laughs> so um, that the next content is also going to be um, um, doing handcraft beer okay so I also like to do my own beer I like the challenges of everything and you know? I like to do a bit of everything so I'm also going to share with you guys how to do handcrafts beer I already buy these recipes already done some of you might know this make uh, it's just it's just good it just goes well I always have success with this one and um, this is a IPA okay um, it says 4.7 it never reaches 4.7 Will be like f between 4 and 4.5 um, mostly it will be like 4 percent that's what it gives me so um, yes yeah, so I've got all the gear all the material so it'll be fun to show you guys how to do the handcraft beer um, with these pre-done recipes I like the um, I, I have never like tried doing my own recipe um, I go to the factory they actually will do the recipe if you ask them what you want but um, normally I just buy this it's just much easier you know so yes that's next content guys now just have to get a third coat okay so it's looking much much better just get a third coat over here and uh, it's just a little update so you guys can see what's going on with this machine I'm trying to give life to this Vinci's machine <laughs> okay then I'll show you guys the use of it but yeah um staying pretty cool so hope you guys um enjoyed okay those videos for today and um i already started the next video <laughs> okay uh, also going to get a, a car involved um i think i'll start with the saxo the one that i'm like trying to get together 
and um, just keep on doing all these updates on these different things different ideas and uh, there's more to come so keep watching the channel thank you for everything guys and see you on the next one